Welcome fellow masters, my name is Musaki from Kadia Gurus, and I gotta ask, what other mobile games do you play? Honestly, it'd be a little silly to think that you only play Frank Good Order, so I just had to ask. I do know, however, that some of you do only play Vagrant Order for a plethora of reasons. So, the other gurus and I are just going to share some of our favorites because we have quite a few games that we do play. Please note that this list isn't in any particular order. We just chose our favorites and slapped them on to talk about them. So, care to join us as we travel down to the App Store? <laughs> and these are 14 other mobile games that we're playing. Master of Eternity. Master of Eternity is a mecha turn-based strategy RPG that was released quite a bit ago. You play the role as a Sulfan Sir Captain of the Alliance, and in a matter of moments, you and your crew are sent on a wild adventure against the Empire. But you're not the one piloting the mechas here. That would be the Pixies, artificial life forms who pilot the mechs with amazing ability. Think of it like Gundam Seed, but Moe. Get it? Alliance sees Pixies as individuals, and the Empire sees them as weapons. Pretty clear, right? The gameplay is clean and fun and lends itself to being able to pick up and go. Plus, there's a bit of a visual novel experience where you can get closer to your Pixie to learn more about them and eventually have them gain more power. Yes, the waifu senses are tingling with this entry, and if you like tactical RPGs like Fire Emblem, but also love a good mecha series, this one is for you. Okay, so this one I got into because I was being shipped with one of the characters before I even knew what the game was. Of course, that just got me interested, like, who is this person? Why am I being shipped with her? What, what is so interesting about her? And that's what ended up drawing me closer and closer to the game. So, you know, bravo, guys. You got me interested in this because of that. Anyway, when the Japanese version of the game went up, I decided to give it a try, you know, see what it's all about, see what's going on. And I thought, alright, yeah, this is pretty cool. It's it's very pretty. The story looks interesting, even though I can't really understand what everyone is saying. But oh well, it's, it's still fun. But when the English version was finally launched, I decided, okay, let's give it another try, let's see. And ever since then, I've been playing Azure Lane. Aside from all the shipping, the art style for this game is what drew me in the most. Gameplay is also very simple. It's side-scrolling battles that have everything from airplanes dropping bombs to artillery blowing up the entire other side of the screen. Most of the time I let the game run on auto battle so I can do something else, but you can also take manual control in order to get that perfect shot lined up and then blow up the enemy flagship. It's very satisfying. In addition to this, you can meet and talk with all of your characters, which is pretty awesome. Everyone has something unique to say, and if you build up your relationship enough, you can even marry the ship of your choice. Anyway, as far as the game goes, the music is pretty good, I've enjoyed all the different characters, and the gotcha rates are actually higher than a lot of the other games I play, and that's honestly a bit more encouraging. But if you were a fan of Kantai Collection, you know, the other ship game, I would definitely give this game a try. Or if you enjoy the art style, or if you enjoy all the girls, you know, everyone has their own reasons for playing the game. And honestly... All of them can be fun in their own way. Oh, and uh, I married Prince Eugene first, if anyone's wondering. <laughs> Don Machi is a little bit weird for me. I, um, I picked it up because um, Musaki was playing it on the stream one night, and he gave me an account with a cute cat girl. Now, I hadn't watched the series at this point. I I have watched it now, but I hadn't watched it before the... Uh, before the game, and the game itself is kind of fun. It's one of those really nice ones for if you're at work, because you can just basically click the uh, the mission you want to do, and it, you can tell it to uh, auto move and auto battle for you. So that way, you don't really need to focus on it. You can if you want to um, give yourself more control, but it's not exactly necessary except for harder missions. There's lots of interesting characters, the artwork is nice, the music is pretty spot on, and the fact that there's some voice acting is really nice. But, uh, yeah, it, it's a fun, simple game for when you are working. You can just basically click and go. Now for one of my current favorites, Epic Seven. This is a fairly recent game that plays like a modern RPG. There's a cast of characters you can draw through the gacha, but instead of it just being all random, you can also get some characters to join you by completing their quests in-game as well. 
Like Grand Order, there's an artifact system similar to Craft Essences to add different passive abilities. Instead of classes being strong against other classes in the game, though, there's an elemental rock-paper-scissors going on with types, while classes only really matter for how to group their abilities. Instead of using Holy Grails to break the cap of a character's level limit, the game is designed so that any character you want can become more powerful by adding stars. If you get a common 3-star unit, you can increase them all the way up to the 6-star, so it really is up to you to decide who you want to have in your party. You can get some pretty crazy teams going, too. One of my favorites is a speed team where the characters can steal speed from the enemy and reduce their own cooldowns, so you can attack a good 2-3 times before your opponent can hit you once. Not your turn yet? Just steal all the turns! <laughs> you can also try stacking debuffs like poisons, burns, or bleeds, or go on defensive and make your own team live through anything they can throw at you. As one pet peeve though, the gacha itself has pretty bad drop rates, but they do give you free rolls so you don't ever have to buy gems unless you want to. For the rolling, when you begin the game and beat the first chapter, you'll get something I haven't seen any game do before. You can do a 10 roll 30 times in what's called a selective summon, so you can decide what your opening team is like. Don't like your first roll? Roll again for free to redo it! Don't like your 30th roll? Reset the game within the app itself to try again. No need to reinstall to start fresh. Overall, I'm really impressed with Epic 7 and how the company is handling it with frequent events, and wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. When I heard that Psy Games, the creators of Grand Blue Fantasy, Shadowverse, and Rage of Bahamut were collaborating with Nintendo, I was completely intrigued on what game they possibly could be making. And then when details for Jagalia Lost finally came out, oh, I was completely on board. And it has been a blast. In terms of overall quality, Jagalia Lost has it in spades. And that coupled with an interesting story, oh. Though I'll admit that games that have siblings for the main character are kind of a soft spot for me, but you know, that's, that's just an aside. The story itself is very well done, and I enjoyed all the interactions between the characters, dragons, and just the world around them. It just, if there's one other thing I love about this game, is the music. I was expecting it to be good, but I wasn't expecting it to be, damn, that's really, really freaking good. So even if you don't play the game, I definitely recommend listening to the music. Just have it play on the side when you're doing something. It's, it's great. On the gameplay side of things, there's plenty of things to do. You can enhance your characters, you can build weapons, you can enhance the same weapons. You can manage your own castle and choose how you want to build things. You also get to see your characters interacting with each other in the castle and it's not just your characters, the dragons. It's honestly kind of odd how many things you classify as a dragon, but each one of those dragons has a story. And it continues the more you get to know them. Just like all the characters have their own story that you can continue. Even the castle has its own story. There's a lot of story in this game. But overall, I think the best selling point for this game is how straightforward it is. Like, it's very easy to get into and very easy to continue. But there's also plenty of stuff for the higher level players as well. There's plenty of challenges and content. There's higher level raids. There's tougher monsters. There's more equipment you can get. You can get your castle to look completely amazing. I've seen some people's castles and wow. Good job, guys. I definitely recommend this game. It's a great game. Psy Games and Nintendo did an incredible job. And it shows in pretty much everything. And now for something completely different! Let's say you like platformers. Scratch that. Let's say you don't completely hate platformers, but also really like Norse mythology and raising monsters. Phantom Gate is not actually a game I expected to like, since I'm not into platformers by any means. Being able to fly your way through most of the puzzles as you explore takes a lot of the frustration out of it though, so you can enjoy the puzzle solving side of it instead. This is a game where you explore levels, solve puzzles, and fight monsters using a combination of main characters you level and grade skills for, and monsters that you evolve to change their elements. Like Epic 7 earlier in this list, you can take really common monsters and increase the number of stars they have to raise their power. Rather than being optional though, this game is built around those same common monsters having multiple forms and elements at different levels. So you might fight an Earth War Bear at level 1, and then 9 chapters later run into a fiery atomic war bear with a very similar model to fight against using your very own naval war bear. Since a lot of the same monsters appear over and over, it can be a little repetitive. But if you're looking for a change of pace, this is a great one to try out for some stress relief. 
It does suffer from some heavy-handed advertising for their microtransactions, but if you can look past that, there's a lot to enjoy for the gameplay itself. Alright, so there's a lot I can say for Shin Megami Tensei Liberation DX2. The name, for example. We're just gonna say DX2, alright? This is an SMT game through and through, and honestly, it's incredibly impressive how they managed to make it look and feel so good on mobile. The music is top-notch, and there are plenty of familiar faces. And no, I'm not talking about the characters, I mean the demons. However, there are the typical SMT difficulty spikes here and there, and sometimes they can catch you completely off guard. But I've seen some other players get through some of the craziest challenges with the most creative strategies, and I have nothing but respect for them. Seriously. But there is something that bothers me a bit in this game, and that is the archetype system. Most demons in the game can fall under one of these archetypes, and these can determine what awakening, slash bonus skills, slash stuff that they can do, pretty much. But don't get me wrong, it's an interesting system, but if you roll a demon you like and it has the wrong archetype, it can feel kinda... bittersweet, you know? Hopefully they take another look into this system and rework it a bit to make it more fulfilling when you do get the demon you want. Other than that, I do like the game a lot. With a good story, great music, and a huge cast of characters and demons, it's a fun time. Just be prepared to fight for your life in some places. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, I guess. And if you're a fan, by all means- Okay, now let's say you like food. I mean, really like food. Well, with food fantasy, food are people too, so it's okay. This is equal parts a restaurant simulation game and adventure game, where you recruit dishes and ingredients to work in your restaurant and fight at your command. For combat, it's actually completely hands-off, so once you set up your team and increase their skills, it is solely up to them to win a fight, though you have a few command seal like abilities you can use to turn the tide in your side's favor. The goal of combat could be to defeat fallen spirits if you're following the plot, but let's be real here. When you fight monsters, you gain ingredients. If you've cleared a level before, you can even just spend stamina to get those same drops directly without waiting through a fight. Then back in your restaurants, you can combine those ingredients to upgrade your skill level with different dishes, or create new ones entirely based on a few different cuisines. The skill level you have with different dishes also changes how much you can sell them for in your restaurant. You can then customize your restaurant with your profits afterward. Like Phantom Gate, it uses a shard system for upgrading characters. You'll get little pieces of a character, which you can either combine for the full character, or add to the one you already have to upgrade them. There are also a lot of events to get new characters, where you can earn them piece by piece. This game is not as strategy heavy as some others due to the simplified combat, but there's a lot to explore and plan out for the restaurant end of things if you want to try a different side of gaming. Or you can just enjoy how great the art is for food people. You do you. Fire Emblem Heroes. Well, I'm kind of a big Fire Emblem fan. You could probably say I've been playing it for a very long time. I got the original on Game Boy Advance when it first came out in North America. But I have to say I enjoy Fire Emblem Heroes not because of the gameplay. The gameplay is super simple for a Fire Emblem game. Maps are barely even maps, but it's the characters that I really enjoy. I, I enjoy being able to grab some of my favorites and listening to some of their lines and then occasionally taking them out and doing some battle with. The the overall experience for Fire Emblem Heroes is, I would say, mediocre, but the characters and the artwork is what saves it. I do enjoy it, and if you enjoy good character art and good character voice acting, and you have ties to the Fire Emblem series, this is a great game to play. Otherwise, I would recommend looking elsewhere if you want a strategy game. Alright, some of you had to know this one was coming. How can we possibly talk about mobile games with Fate fans without mentioning the game's greatest competitor? Grand Blue Fantasy is a main rival for FGO in popularity, and it's kind of hilarious to watch them go back and forth at number one on different charts in the app stores internationally. Not to mention that both of them have a particularly large number of variations for Jean d'Arc and Jean Alter. Aside from that though, the gameplay is very different fundamentally. Grand Blue is a story-based game. Instead of every level requiring that you beat fights, there's different bite-sized parts of a bigger story to read, leading up to larger fights later. I am literally over a hundred chapters into the game, and it feels like there's no end in sight to the plots as they develop different characters. 
And when it comes to units, without question, this has one of the biggest pools of characters. While there is a gacha, you'll also get free characters with nearly every event just by doing the event. And the devs are very generous with giving out free roles during each of these events as well. Each of those characters also has their own story to read anytime. And as you level them up, more parts of their story will unlock to read, which can give them more abilities and give you gems just for reading it. With combat, instead of borrowing a character from a friend for a fight, you'll borrow a summon. The main summon you have will give your entire team a passive effect, and then you can use any summons you have equipped on your team as an ability on a long cooldown. These passive effects, though, can be pretty insane because they stack. With friends, you can also do co-op fights in real time, and raids that up to 30 players can join and get rewards from once collectively you do enough damage to take it down. I love this game. You might be able to tell. At the same time, though, it's a little hard to recommend since it can be overwhelming to get into at first, since there's so much to do and learn about. There's even new events and updates just about every three days. There's just so much content to do, and it's easy to get lost in. Setting up an account can also take a bit of work, since it's not out officially in the US like other games. Once you get it installed and set up an account in Japanese, though, you can switch it to English and never have any issues. We'll put a link on how to set it up in the description below. Grand Blue is also branching out from the mobile games to make a fighting game based on these characters, and a PS4 RPG as well that should be coming soon to the West. Honestly, the first time I saw this game, I was completely impressed, and I gotta say, Final Fantasy Mobius has delivered on all fronts. Man, I didn't know what to expect when I went into this, because I didn't really get a huge grasp on the main character just yet. And when I did, I loved the main character's interactions with Cloud, like, the banter was wonderful. Echo, as annoying as she can be here and there, she's this fairy companion that follows you around, she made me like the main character more, just because of how they interacted. Being the warrior of light, but not actually wanting to be the warrior of light, and then just fighting for your own survival? I wanted to see where that went, and man, it got crazy. I'm not going to talk to you more about that, but it got crazy. On top of that, the gacha system in this game functions a little differently considering you get jobs or ability cards, or... But basically, the jobs you get in the game are all divided in different categories, like attacker or breaker or things like that, but that is broken down a little bit more to things like mage classes or support classes, which can also be mages, you know, or tank classes or attack classes, things like that. And you have your... the normal classes that people are used to, like Black Mage, or Dragoon, or Knight, to more iconic jobs like the First Class Soldier, or Balam Mercenary. For me, the first job that I ever got, I remember this very distinctly, because I worked super hard to get this first summoning for it, and I was just like, alright, let's see what I get. I wanted like a Dark Knight, I wanted something I could use to fight with, you know, that I wouldn't have to worry too much about. I got White Mage. Yeah, I sat there and I stared at it and I was thinking, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? Heal them to death? In the end, after doing more reading and research and maxing the job out, it actually worked out. And that job was the first one I actually maxed, so, you know. The game, after that, it just it kept me going. I would farm, I would fight, I would read the story, I would see how far it would go, I would get my ass kicked left and right, I would go into multiplayer, i see all these incredible cards and people, and I'd be like, oh my god, I want to be like that one day. And eventually it did happen. Before that, I got my ass beat. And, yeah, it hurt. But when I finally beat Act 1, I was legitimately proud of how much time and effort it took, and how hard I worked for it, because it's, essentially it's a Final Fantasy game, and you know how Final Fantasy games are. They can take a really long time, but they usually have good stories and interesting characters. So when I beat Act 1, I'm like, alright, yeah. And then they announced Act 2, and I was like, oh, what happens? What happens to the characters that I've come to know over this story? What happens to the main character? What happens to everyone? I want to see. And I'm going to keep playing to see where this goes. But overall, with the story, graphics, and all the options we were given in this game, it's honestly one of my favorite games. A Final Fantasy game where you can play almost anything you want to take on the story any way that you want. Anyway, 
I would definitely recommend this story if you were a fan of good writing and really good graphics because this is probably one of the best looking mobile games I've ever seen in a long time. Plus, if you like to do multiple things like I do, having an auto battle system is incredible. Plus, you get to watch everything explode at once and not have to do anything at all. It's honestly kind of therapeutic to watch everything blow up. Anyway, Final Fantasy Mobius. Definitely recommend it. One of the games that I've been playing for a while is Ingress. Now, I got into Ingress when I was in high school and received a closed beta invite from a friend. Ingress is this type of hybrid territory control and capture the flag game where you as a player go around and take control over points of interest. In the game, they're called portals. And once you take ownership of these portals, you can link them together. When you link three portals together in the shape of a triangle, you can create a control field where you gain points for your team and interrupt linking portals for the other team. The catch for this game is that Ingress is played entirely in the real world using your GPS and your phone is, well, a portal into seeing what is actually going on in the game. Now, this may sound familiar because some of the same mechanics are used in Pokemon Go, and you're not wrong there. Niantic, the game company responsible, developed both these titles, with Ingress being the progenitor to Pokemon Go. In fact, some of the Pokestops in Pokemon Go are actually originally portals that were from Ingress. So if you're familiar to Pokemon Go, jumping into Ingress isn't so bad. The story behind Ingress is rather convoluted and evolves as time goes on, but the basics is, is that there's this new type of matter called exotic matter that exists in the world and is used to basically speed up human evolution. Now you can take one of two sides on this. One side, called the Enlightened, embrace this and want to make sure that its influence is spread all over the world because they believe it's a new type of basically our second evolution. The other team is called the Resistance and what they basically try to do is protect humanity by making sure that this doesn't affect everyone because we don't know where it's from, we don't know the alien influence it has on people and that type of thing. But again the story's pretty complicated and evolves over time. The story is only minimally built into the application itself because the actual game application is more focused on you taking control points and all that jazz. So most of the story is actually online for people to read and investigate. One of my favorite things that I experienced when I was playing Ingress were the community events. Niantic called these anomalies. And the goal of an anomaly was to, within a certain time period, collect as many points as you can from the other team and see who has, it, who has the most at the end. Now, this is a full day excursion with people from all over, maybe even different states, some people even helping remotely or from across other states to try and help you win this anomaly. And the amount of teamwork and dedication I've seen for this kind of team ops experience is something I haven't seen before, especially in a mobile game. If you were starting off playing Ingress today, my first thing to tell you would to be find your local either resistance or enlightened group and they should be able to help you out. Because the community experience is one of the things that I think is integral to the game. But one of Ingress's greatest strengths is also kind of its big Achilles heel and weakness to it. And that's the fact that you do have to go outside. Now I'm not saying this from like a neat perspective where I just want to stay inside and play video games. Because that's the reason why I really liked Ingress. It got me outside, it got me exploring the city that I was already living in. And finding these new places that I don't think I'd ever would have found beforehand. But at the same time you still are going outside. Like, the items that you get in-game are based off of locations that you visit and getting, and getting them through portals. So if you're running low on items, the only other way to get more items isn't through like a shop or anything. It's to go around and keep digging all these portals to get all your items. 
and item restocking might take a while. I've had times where I've had to take a week's worth of farming for items just because I used them all in a big mission on a Saturday or something like that. So if you like exploring your city, or haven't and want to try and find out new stuff about your city that you haven't before, I'd highly recommend Ingress. And I'd also recommend buying a battery pack for your phone, considering that GPS eats up a lot of battery. The last game on the list is Landgresser Mobile. We started with a strategy RPG and we'll end with one. Landgresser came out recently and from what I've seen so far, it looks amazing. Like Fire Emblem Heroes, they are taking an older RPG franchise and moving it to mobile to revive it from the depths of obscurity. The three main characters seem to be made for the game, but it comes with a plot that is very similar to Record of Lotus War or an old school fantasy. You are offered a ton of interesting options to play too. Most for training your units and soldiers, arena battles where you can battle another player's team for points or rewards, and even a mode that traverses through the history of Landgresser. Upgrading your weapons, changing classes, all of the RPG elements that you can find in a strategy game can be found here. Combine that with compelling music and some great looking gameplay, it looks to be a stellar hit. Please note, when you sign in for Android users, they now give the option to log in with Facebook or Google along with a guest account. For iOS, you only have guest account in Facebook as of this time of the recording. Be sure to choose wisely, as once you've chosen the sign-in option, it binds your account to that sign-in option permanently. So those are only a few of the games that we at Kadia Gurus are playing. What do you think? Are you playing any of these games too? Are there any other games you're playing that weren't on the list? Let us know in the comments below and let's talk about it. We're always up for looking for new games to play. Until next time, we are the Kaldia Gurus, and we're logging out. Thank you for watching the video, Senpai. If you liked it, please leave a like or a comment. Subscribe if you want to see more, and make sure to ring the bell to be notified when we upload next. Special thanks to our sponsors and Patreons, and especially... 80A76 Adam Uranuk Admin B Albert Rio Black Knight 21 Decaf Devin Luca Dragonath 1512 Freddy Gutierrez Hifumi G Lucky Number 5 Merlanda Michael Lumna Michael Potter Navy Cherub Project Xion Ravenleaf 182 Re Nico Cyphus Spartan X425 The Voice of St. Courts Tristan Corey Tristan Connor William Myers Yasashi Fuyu Samian347 And Nell Celestine You masters are truly wonderful! Now good luck and fight hard! Here comes a new